think that's where a lot of people go go bad with a pup. They throw them in a pen and just throw feed to them every day. And to me, you got to make a connection with them. Some guys don't agree with me on that, but I think you got to have a good bond with a dog. real simple I think with a pup and a lot of people don't understand it. When a pup is ready to start, it will start. You can't force a pup to start and you can't force a pup to tree. It has to do it on its own. I'd like to welcome everybody to uh, what's become my favorite part of Walker Days, uh, which is our conversation with the legends. I've been um, doing this for a couple of years now. We've had some really, really good folks up here, really good hunters. Uh, this year's going to be just a touch different. We um, generally have two legends up here with us, but this year we've only got one. We got Mr. Terry Vance out of Kentucky. Um, Steve Smith out of the Danville, Virginia area was supposed to be with us, but unfortunately he fell ill towards the end, um, or towards the end of this week, and um, is not able to make it, so hopefully somewhere in the future we'll be able to have Steve. But we're, we're excited to have Terry here, and uh, over the past few years we've, we've had breeders, we've had handlers, and we've had hunters and trainers, and I can honestly say that from knowing Terry He's done it all. He's done all those things. So I think he's going to be able to give us a, a lot more insight on all those topics. And we're going to touch on all those topics if we can, Terry. And it, yeah. with you just being one up here, it may be that this is shorter, but I also know you like to talk as much as I do, so it could be longer than, than what we've done in the recent years. That's right. Years. We're, we're going to try to entertain them today. That, that sounds good. <laughs> um, so, Terry, with that, and at the end we'll, we'll have the crowd, if, if you guys – uh, have anything that I didn't touch on and you want to ask some questions. Uh, Oakley, if you have any questions for him, you just raise your hand, okay? All right. Uh, Terry, introduce yourself. Tell us where you're from and how long you've been into coon hunting. Well, I'm from Corinth, Kentucky. I started coon hunting when I was 16 years old. Uh, my dad was always uh, had hounds. He was a fox hunter, bird hunter. I had beagles before then. And uh, anyway, I had a... Uh, high school friend that coon hunted had an old red bone called gomer and uh so he started me coon hunting and uh we hunted probably about three months um before we ever seen a coon up a tree but old gomer could treat one <laughs> it sounds like it yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh but uh, all them guys that i hunted with back in I, I don't know any of them that still has dogs or coon hunting so i've, I've stayed with it ever since so. so you started when you're 16 how old are you now i'm 61 be 62 in october well, I, I won't ask you to do any math because we were trying to do some yeah. math yesterday and and we couldn't come up with it but that's a lot of years ain't it yeah it's been a long time um i've, I've only had a few breaks in that uh, time period uh, back when I was a younger man, used to get a girlfriend once in a while, and I'd I always quit coon hunting with when I got that girlfriend. But uh, that'll put a dampener on yeah. it. Won't it? <laughs> but when I started dating my wife, and it ended up being my wife, I told her, I said, I want to tell you, I ain't going to tell you how many girlfriends I had before you, but I said I've always quit coon hunting for every one of them. But uh, just letting you know right now, I'm not going to quit coon hunting. So <laughs> that's how, that's how you knew she was the one, right? Yeah, that's right. So <laughs> she worked out pretty good. All right. Um, so what about um, how'd you get into the Walker breed? Well, it, I just, uh, I, first dogs I had was grade dogs that had black and tan and crossed up with something. But an old dog come into a boy's house, a buddy of mine, and she had pups. And some of them looked like black and tan, white chest. I got two of them, started with them, and then uh, I ended up getting a rester dog. I, you know, they said you had to have a rester dog to have a good one, so that's where I started at. And what, then, what was your first one? Well, he, I named him Vance's uh, Ramblin' Joe. He was supposed to have three or four world champions in his background, but back in, you couldn't depend on papers too much, so I'm not sure. And the guy he come from, it might it might have been true and might not, you know. But uh, 
I hunted that dog, and uh, and and like I say, they was uh, three hour hunts back in. I hunted him in five hunts that one year and placed him in them, and, and four out of the five I hunted the last hour by myself, you know, because somebody made minus out or something. But uh, And um, I bought a old female off of a guy, and uh, he was supposed, supposed to be a good coon dog. And uh, I was hunting her and hunting that young dog one night when she was running the track, and that young dog come back. Well, I got after him, sent him back in there. He come back again. I got after him, sent him back in there again, and I called him at daylight. Come find out they was running the fox. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the dogs were smarter than me back then. <laughs> well, that's a, a, a pretty good segue into how have you seen coon hunting and competition hunting change since then? Well, one thing, you don't have to hunt so long. And, you know, most of them shorter hunts. And then... Uh, um, Dogs have changed so much because used to be they'd all stay together. When I first started hunting, you had to walk hunt. Now you turn them loose, they go in all different directions, and most of the time you're driving around finding dogs somewhere, you know. With uh, the tracking collars, GPSs and stuff has really made a big difference. And, and uh, most of the time, more things are more action pack I think now too so well and I don't mean to put you on the spot but what's your what's your preference I mean did you like it better back then or do you like it better now when I was in my 20s the three hour hunts didn't mind me but when I'm now 60 I don't care to hunt an hour <laughs> <laughs> so you started uh competition about how old were you when you started competition I was in my 20s uh, I mean some of you guys might know when they quit the three hour hunts but I think that, that year I hunted them, that was the last year they had the three-hour hunts. But that's had to be 40-some years ago. Right. And um, I, I said at the beginning that, um, you know, we've had breeders, we've had handlers and hunters. Um, you've seems like you've done it all. Um, tell us about your, your breeding program and when did you start that? Okay. Well, I ended up getting this dog, uh, that these line of dogs that I've got started come from Ken Maynard. Uh, from Pikeville, Kentucky, and uh, I'm sure some of you heard of Burning Fork Jewel and, and uh, Burning Fork Screaming Casey, and that's what what he was out of. And, and uh, back then, Ken sold them pups six weeks old for $300 a piece. That was pretty good pup money back then. And uh, I just got that dog, uh, uh, met a boy, and he gave me half interest of him for me to hunt him, and I kept him, and I. I was hunting with a guy that had a good dog, and uh, I hunted with him for three or four nights, and I asked him what did he think about him, and he said, well, I wouldn't feed him for him. <laughs> so, so that just made me hunt him that much harder. Back then, I could hunt four to five, six nights a week. I hunted that dog completely year by himself, and uh, made extremely good coon dog. Uh, I never did finish him the night champion, but back in, you'd go to a hunt and there might be 20, 30 dogs, but I had nine seconds on that dog and never did finish him. His name was Battlewood Cash, and that's what that boy had him named I got him from, and that's how I got Battlewood Kennels. I asked him if I could use that name, but I just liked that. So was that the start, the absolute that, start of your of your line? Yeah, that was the start of my line. Uh, so what, what, did you see, what did you see in those dogs that you liked? Well, that, that dog there, the first thing, he was 14 months old when I got him. Boy, had hunted him twice. The first thing, I took him to Indiana and hunted with a guy, and I lost him for a week up there and ended up getting him back. We went squirrel hunting that day. The first thing he treed, ever treed was a yellow cat. The second thing, the first thing he treed at nighttime was a groundhog. And we shuck that groundhog out to him, and they both fought so long and got so hot that they just laid down beside each other and quit. <laughs> and and that's the only off game he ever treed. He never would tree a possum. If a dog treed a possum, if he treed, you better look up that tree because it's going to be a coon. And he did that twice while I was hunting. Well, what do you think some of these dog trainers nowadays would think about shaking a groundhog out to a dog? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Back in, we didn't care what it was as long as they treated it. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So um, we were talking, and one of my, uh, I guess, favorite stories is, uh, it's a feel-good story, is how you came to, to own and um, 
and have Joe Brown. Right. And and I've hunted with a lot of your dogs uh, over the years. And what did you have? Sam Brown and Bill Brown. And I don't know what all uh, you had. And and you had a little dog called Pounder that we'll talk about in just a minute. But right. um, Joe Brown, would you say he was one? Of, he was one of the early dogs in your line, right? Yeah. Well, he was actually fifth generation. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the cash dog was first. I kept like three females after the cash dog and then they ended up getting to joe okay but, uh, uh, how, so so take us take us down um how you got to joe and, and i want you to tell the folks the story of, of of joe okay well uh i had i had a female there and i took her and bred her to rat attack and uh, there was a guy that lived up to home he was he was an older gentleman and his name was joseph ray brown and when everybody talked to him or called him, they always said his whole name, Joe, he'd call him Joe Brown. Well, anyway, him and his son had bought two pups off of me out of, out of this female I had in, in rat attack. And he said, I'd like to have something to train my pups with. Well, I had probably 30 dogs back in. And I said, well, just take their mother. And he lived on a dead end road. I said, just turn her loose. She'll get them going. So he did. And she got them started for him, and I said, just keep her over there. When she comes season, we'll breed her. And uh, so anyway, she come in, he was all worried about what we're going to breed her to, you know. And he, he never was a competition hunter. He was just a pleasure hunter. And uh, so anyway, he, uh, that's when Rock River Gap, that Alan Snagger had, had just won the UKC World Hunt. And... Uh, Alan happened to be down to Dry Ridge there close to me. He was hunting with Tony Martin. And uh, Beth was judging a AKC show in Lexington. And I happened to run into him and I said, well, got this female. I said, I'd breed her, but it's gonna be a week before she's ready to breed. And, and he said, well, just meet me tomorrow. I'll take her home, breed her. Be back down here in two or three weeks. I'll bring her back. So that's what we did. Well, old Joe Brown, he, he wanted to, full page ad out of one of my coon hunting books and and i want to tell you i probably i probably got 30 years of prescriptions of them books still got them and, and maybe only two or three months missing out, out of all of them but anyway gave him a full page ad a gap he was going around just tickled to death you know and showing everybody he's going to get some pups out of this world champion well the pups was due in january that year and uh, Joe and his wife was headed out to the store and we had a snow on the ground and he slid off the road there and hit a fence post. Wasn't a wreck, wasn't enough to kill him, but he had a heart attack and died. Well, he was neighbors to my mom and dad there and my dad took the female up there and, and uh, let her have the pups. And uh, Joe's wife was named Barb and I told her, I said, Barb, I said, uh, me and Joe had a deal on these pups with his partners. I said, when I sell them, I'll bring you half the money. And uh, she said, no, you don't have to do that. I said, just give my son one. His name was Dwayne Brown. And he actually lives in the old home place right now. But uh, he said, just give, give him one, and, and that'll be good enough. And I said, no, I'll give him one. I'll keep one and uh, give you half the money. So we ended up selling them. And uh, the, well, the first guy that come to want a pup wanted this female. Well, I was counting on the females, and I done had her picked out to keep. And, and uh, I said, you can't have her. I'm one, that's one I'm going to keep. And my dad was there, and, and he says, you let that man have that female. You keep this male pup right here. He picked Joe out, and I said, well, Dad, I'm going to keep him. I'm going to name him after Joe. And that's how I got to Joe Brown. But uh, Joe Brown, he, he started when he was 10 months old. I come to the Trend Walker pup hunt they had, and uh, there was a guy named Leroy Roder, had a litter mate to him, and he was already running Trend. And we come, I come up there and went pleasure hunting with him, and that's when my pup started too. And uh, the next year I come back to that pup hunt, Joe was 20 months old, and I, he won the pup hunt. And you, you told me something that um, a lot of us know. If, if you're going to be in this game, you got to have breaks. Right, right. right. You, you got to have breaks. I mean, not always the best dog wins, but you said you got a lot of, a lot of good breaks with Joe, right? Yeah, Joe, Joe just seemed like when I hunt in a hunt, whatever I needed, he could do. And uh, 
in, I, if he needed a strike, you know, he could trail a trail up and tree a coon, or he could just go in there and fall tree. And I would score coons out of den trees. I mean, I squalled coons out of dens, or you walk in big leafy tree, you know, you think you ain't gonna find a coon to be sitting in the wide open. And, uh, but whenever I'd win with Joe, I'd always call Joe's wife, Barb, and let her know. And uh, I believe it was 2007, the one the hunt dog of the year was Joe, running them Walker sectionals. Of course, he'd win them plaques with the clocks on them. And uh, one of them I won that year, I gave to her, and she still got it. So. That's that's uh, I, I, one of my all-time favorite stories since you've told me that, and and um, I asked you, I said, uh, what, what do you attribute all them good breaks to? And you said, I think it's because I did right by Barb and and um, and named him Joe, and so I I, I really appreciated that, and I, right. I I know anybody who's heard that um, certainly certainly appreciate it as much as I do. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about what all you won with Joe, but um, what. What did you like about that line of dogs that you just kept breeding um, for those genetics? Well, from the very first one I had, the, the dog you could just, he was kind of dog you could just talk to. And he, you didn't have to lead him. And all of them that I've hunted all down through the years, I train them where you don't have to lead them. You can call them in. Back in, I didn't have the shock collars and all that stuff to help you train that. And, uh, but most of them, you didn't have to do that. And, uh, but these dogs, as long as you could, if they could hear you, you could call them in. It didn't matter if they was treed across the river or whatever, they'd come back. This seemed like they had some brains. Right. You know, and, and they was always, most of the time, all down through the line was easy, easy starter. I mean, all you had to do is just take them hunting. And once you showed them a coon, you, you could just start hunting them by themselves, you know. Now, when I, I guess when I got into um, a lot of the AKC hunts, you used to do a lot of the AKC C hunts with us, and and I hunted with a little dog that you had a couple times, and you caught him Pounder. What, now was he out of Joe? Yeah, he was directly out of Joe, and was out of a, a rat attack female, which was out of a, a double Spring Creek Rock female. So it had some good old bloodlines in her there. And Pounder weighed what about forty pounds? Yeah, soaking yeah. wet. Yeah, but he, he didn't get named Pounder for his size, I don't think. I think it was the way he treed, because yeah. he, really, he was really a hard tree dog. Right. And, and uh, t tell us a little bit about him. You did quite a bit of winning with it. You probably won more with Pounder than you did any dog, right, or would it have been Joe? Well, yeah, probably Pounder, but I hunted Pounder more in the hunts, too. I mean, both of them finished out the dual grand. Uh, Joe Brown, as far as I know, was the first dual grand out of Rock River Gap. Um, I can't remember the guy's name, but there was a guy from Tennessee that had a female. And um, he, we was close. He ended up finishing his dual grand about two weeks after mine. And, uh, but we talked back and forth a few times. And then uh, Pounder, um, actually with Pounder, of course I had his litter there and I'd raised that cross several times with Joe and that rat attack female. And uh, a buddy of mine had, had had one out of the litter before Pounder, and he was seven months old and just unbelievable. And um, he shot a coon out to him one night and it uh, bit him through his, in his tongue somehow. And the next day that pup died. And I told him, I said, well, come on up here. And I said, I got this little pup and it's the next litter, same cross. I said, I'll just give you him. And he actually, he took him and he hunted him a little bit. And, and he called me, he said, I think I'm gonna bring that pup back. He said, he's just too little. And I said, well, whatever you wanna do. So he, he brought him back, I gave him another one. He had him about a week and he brought him back because he said, he makes my dog hunt too deep. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but anyway, on Pounder, uh, I had him there for a while. Well, me and this guy that hunted, his name was Manuel Crace. Me and him had done a pup deal and uh, he wanted a female pup. Well, I didn't have none, they had all males. And I said, just take this little pup, and that was Pounder. I said, just take him and, and get our deal straight, you know. So he took him, and uh, so anyway, he had him for a little bit, and, and uh, he had a coon down at his house, and he got out of the pen, Well, that pup got trended. 
So we told this guy, Vernon Mullins, said, you need to take this dog. And uh, so Vernon took him, hunted him a little bit. He called me up, said, you need to get this pup back. And uh, so I got him back. Well, anyway, the guy that I'd originally gave him to, Gail Craddock, he come up there and got him. He hunted him about six months, and uh, he said, better come down, better come down and look at this dog. And uh, so we, we turned loose in a cornfield, and I had a pretty good female at that time. And Pounder was probably running about 100 feet or so in front of her and come out the side of that corn tree. And this unbelievable tree dog. And uh, he said, now I named him Pounder because of the way he trees there. And said, uh, said um, if you want to buy this pup back, you can buy him. So I, I, and then Manuel, I had to give him $25 to take him because they didn't pay him up. So, so I gave him away, paid $25 to give him away, and then paid $2,500 back. <laughs> That's just good business. Right. Huh? <laughs> but, uh, but I'd say the first four or five hunts I hunted that dog, I sold the pup off off of my dogs just because of the way he treated, you know. Yeah. And, uh, well, that's what I was going to say. I, I'd say you got at least that much yeah. times 10 of enjoyment out of, right. out of him, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, carrying him around on all them hunts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and one of your uh, one of your dogs out of your line, I don't know if you owned him or not uh, at the time, Terry, but you won the AKC World one year, right? Yeah, that was uh, the Bill Brown dog, and he just died here about two months ago. He was 12 years old, but uh, uh, he was out of a Joe and a and a. They said she was a double flag bred female, but went back to some pulpwood breeding and stuff, and. Uh, and I just let people hunt that dog. I, I probably four or five people would hunt him. A uh, neighbor boy down the road said, hey, you got a dog I can train some pups with? And I said, yeah, just take Bill. I said, I, I haven't hunted him once in about a year, but I said, he'd treat a coon. He called me the next night. He said, how long been since you hunted that dog? I said, I've hunted him once in the last year. He said, well, he treated three singles just like it wasn't nothing, you know. Well, he hunted that dog for two months, missed four or five nights, he said. And uh, brought him back about two feet, two weeks before the AKC World. I had three dogs qualified for that. I had uh, him and uh, a dog called Mac and uh, Pounder. So I had a boy hunt Pounder, man hunted Mac. He was just, wasn't even two years old yet. And I hunted Bill, and, uh, and I thought they had the better dogs been hunted, you know, and, and uh, but ended up winning that with, uh, with Bill. And uh, that, that was the second, uh, Joe Brown reproduced two world champions. Uh, Handis Creek, Phil and Frisky, she won the uh, ACHA and UKC yep. World Hunt. And then Bill won the AKC World Hunt. So he, he reproduced two world champions. So. Right. And I'm hunting with Frisky, she was a super nice, super nice female. Mm -hmm. um, what are you hunting now? Are you still hunting the same line? Yeah, I'm on the, the I'd say the eighth generation of them. Because if you go back, that old cash dog was eighth generation back. I've got a five-year-old. She turned five-year-old last month, female. Uh, and she's out of um, a dog that was out of pounder, out of the Mac dog. Um, and then I've got a, a three-year-old dog. It's out of Mac's litter mate brother, Rocky. And, um, and so they're both eighth generation dogs. Uh, Molly, she was, um, she had just turned two, and uh, I couldn't hunt her in the pup hunt at Walker Days, so I hunted her in Walker Days. And uh, sat on a Saturday night, she won the cast second in the restaurant and uh, went out in the semifinals, I guess you call it, got in the final three, and ended up third, her just turning two years old. So that was a. Uh, and are you hunting her tonight? Yeah, I hunted her last night and, and got beat, but. You do that when you hunt you do that, much. You do that a lot, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> a lot more than you win. Yeah. Um, Terry, um, I don't know if you remember this or not, but Terry gave, Terry and Pounder gave me one of my first lessons in uh, competition hunting one night. Um, I was hunting Jewel, and um, we were at an AKC hunt, so AKC World, or I can't remember what we were at, but I got up on, on these guys' first half of the hunt, probably two coons, and... Um, Jewel came around the field edge there and she started pecking around on a tree and I was all gas, no brakes at the time. And I was thinking, boy, I'm gonna put them three coons down now, they'll withdraw. And I treat her and she wasn't right and she, she moved and I got minus. And Terry and Pounder came back and treat a couple coons and they beat me. And Terry came up 
to me after the hunt and he put his hand on my shoulder and he said, uh, little buddy, I don't think I would have treated her back there. And I said, yeah, no kidding, Terry, thanks. <laughs> Th thanks for that life lesson there, there bud. But uh, y'all went on and, and, and placed really high, really high that year. And now every time I think twice about treating a dog, I think about you and yeah. her that night. <laughs> um, Terry, I always, I always like to get uh, folks up here, the legends, to tell us one of their favorite coon hunting stories. And... Um, it can be something from a competition hunt. It can be, you know, Charlie uh, Charlie Butler had us in stitches a couple of years telling us telling us a tale. So, uh, what's your favorite coon hunting story? Well, I, when you hunt as long as I have, you have several. I don't know which one's the funnest one. But uh, this one thing on the legend thing, I don't think 61, you can be a legend. You have to be dead to be a legend. <laughs> so, I told him yesterday, I'm probably the youngest one that's ever done this yet. But... But um, I'd say you're right. Yeah. I'd say so. Yeah. But um, I'll tell the story about taking my wife hunting. We was dating, and uh, I wanted to introduce her to coon hunting because I done told her I wasn't going to quit. And so we, we went right behind her house. It was a full moon lit night. She didn't have no light. I was walking about 100 feet ahead of her all the way. Got in there to the dog's tree. I done had them tied up, done shined the tree. She finally made it in there, and that's the way you're ready to go back. So we walked her the same way back. Got back to the house, and I said, well, how you like it? She said, said it's all right. I said, you don't like it, do you? She said, I don't want to do it five or six nights a week. <laughs> so, but um, Well, but she stayed by you, though, right? Yeah, she stayed by me. She... Um, she also told me, she's, you know, because I told her I wouldn't quit hunting, and I said, if we get married, I said, the only way I'll quit, but financially or something, you know, and I have to quit, I'll quit. And uh, so anyway, one year here, a few years back, she was doing their taxes, and she said, you know how much you spent on dog papers and stuff this year? And I said, no, I don't. A little over $7,000. <laughs> That's getting close to quitting time, but she didn't make me quit. So, <laughs> all right, yeah. good. Well, I know, um, I know you you have to thank her. Uh, but is there anybody else? You know, we all have people that we look up to that maybe helped us along the way. Uh, is there anybody you need to need to thank for for the career that you've had in coon hunting? Yeah. Well, f first off, you gotta you gotta thank the guys that started started the Walker dogs of hunting. You know, none of my dogs would be here if it wasn't for the guys in the past that done them dogs. And uh, so they the, they the ones that get all the credit for us being able to hunt now. And, uh, you know, I, I, I can't sit here and name them all, but, uh, you know, sure I'll miss somebody, but you all know a lot of the guys that started the Walker breed. And, and, uh, and that's one thing about this Walker days, you know. When I first started coming this Walker days and we had the Lee Crawford hunt, I got to meet Lee, you know, and, and some of the old other guys, uh, John Monroe's always been here. And, you know, all them guys is the ones that are getting the credit for our dogs we have now, you know. Right. Uh, you know, and, and uh, I, I believe in the Lord. I, the Lord. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. Wouldn't be able to do none of this. And so we got to thank the Lord first for everything we have. You know, uh, my family's always been supportive. Uh, if any of you that's coon hunting very long, you know that a lot of times your family is the one doing the sacrifice, you know. And I, I've left my wife and kids home with many a weekend to go to a hunt or something, you know. And this, this thing Cam, I've got two girls, twin girls, 25, boy that's 30. And uh, my son, I coon, coon hunted him too young, had to carry him back to the truck, and that was the end of that for him. He'd hunt the youth hunt every year. And the uh, girls, they hunted with me quite a bit and uh, hunted a lot of the youth hunts and stuff. But, uh, you know, your family's a big part that allows you to be able to do this too. So Right. Um, w with that, I, I'd like to ask anybody from the crowd um, if there's any questions or thoughts you might have for, for Terry. Call them out and we'll announce it on the radio here. Well, Terry, that must mean we did a pretty good job, buddy. Yeah, why well, no, ain't done no yet? Question. Oh, well, you go. Well, you go right ahead. You say. You say whatever you need to say. Yeah. yeah. Well, I just, you know, uh, I just think this Walker Days hunt. I always was my vacation, you know, and uh, 
And a lot of you people, that's the only time I get to see you. And, you know, just thankful for all the friends I've made over the years. Uh, I know some people uh, that you beat, that they, they just can't be friends with you, but I've made a bunch of them. You know, and and, uh, and like I say, it's just a, a special time for me to be able to come to this Walker Days and, and, and see people that that's the only time you see them. You know, and, and it's been a been a good run for me. I, and I, I really like supporting the, the youth and the youth hunts. Um, I helped our state youth hunt for 20 some years. And, uh, you know, and I've got a, there's a young man up here now. He, he's actually just turned 15 to, today. Uh, a couple years ago, he wanted to get into coon hunting. And uh, he took my little female. We went to hunt on Friday night before the youth hunt. And I said, you just go with me and just kind of watch, see how things go. Well, I got beat. And I told him, I said, uh, after we got done, I said, now, now, tonight I showed you how to get beat. I said, you show me how to win tomorrow night. And they come to that youth hunt the next night and won it. You know, and, and like I say, he's still hunting. And uh, so I really enjoyed taking, taking young kids hunting. Uh, most of my hunting partners has always been older than me. And, uh, and I've lost some good ones they've passed on, you know, but uh, thankful for all the things they taught me how to, how to hunt and stuff and just really enjoy hunting with the youth. And uh, if we don't keep them youth of hunting, then one of these days we all going to be gone and the coon hunting's going to be gone, yep. you know. Um, I think, think our uh, state association, Kentucky Houndsmen, uh, They've done a lot for our hunting rights, and if you have an association for your state, you need to support them, you know, because that's, uh, there's a lot of going out trying to stop us from hunting and stuff, so, you know, and uh, and like I say, I'm just thankful for the dogs I've had in the past. I, this job I've got, I work on, I've been, may they be there 38 years, and I can't hardly hunt during the week. Uh, only time I can hunt during the week if I'm not working the next day. So all my dogs has been, for 30 years, has been weekend warriors, I call them, you know. And uh, now I'm so tired when I come in on Friday, most of the time I miss Fridays, so, you know. But this has been great. Uh, when Alan contacted me after I'd be interested in it, you know, it, this is an honor, and I'm just thankful for it. Well, Terry, you are a legend in anybody's book. You may be one of the youngest ones we've had, but uh, but you are a legend with what you've what you've done for our sport and for our youth, and the accomplishments that you've had. So we sincerely appreciate you being here. And uh, with that, that will conclude our 2024 conversation with the legend Terry Vance. Thank y'all. Thank you. Terry. Thank you. All right. You ended up trend seven tenths of a mile. I had my light on coming in and he had another coon, so turned him loose three times, he had three coons. Ah, 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 ah.